most wonderful name we have declared and so it shall stand let us bow our heads down as we pray father we thank you father we bless you father we glorify your holy name lord we acknowledge you so much oh god we bless you and thank you and we are standing before you to say to you lord that we love the way you carry us we thank you, Father, for preserving, providing, protecting, defending us, fighting our unseen battles, even the battle of the night. We give you all the thanks, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. We ascribe all the thanks, worship, honor, and adoration to you forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, you preach your word before us. We want to eat your word, we want to drink your blood. We ask by your word today, Father, open our spiritual sights. Open our spiritual understanding, Lord. Grant us what you gave to us that we lost as a result of sin. Restore us back in you fully, Father. Establish us in holiness and cause us to fly higher in all areas of our endeavors in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear a living amen? Can I hear a living amen? Mighty man in battle by your word today, I ask, O oh God, that you break loose of every spirit of death. Uh, that you break the chains and the powers and the bondages and the cages of death out of everyone under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, let the power and the sting of death be thwarted out not now. In the name of Jesus Christ, and let every living soul, let everyone under the sound of my voice, that the devil and stole his or her life away from him or her be restored in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name and every living soul shout a louder amen. Can I hear you clearing a louder amen? Take your seat. God bless you. Yes, we are fasting, we are praying and we are here to do something today. We'll be doing it both spiritual and physical. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The topic before me said defeating untimely death. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus. Defeating untimely death. Defeating untimely death. There are two types of death, spiritual death and physical death. Hallelujah. You see, I like you where you open your Bible. The only thing that we confess to you or that will, make, that will make you to be sure of whatever I'm going to say before this pulpit is your book. I mean the holy book in your hand is your Bible. Without your Bible, even me can deceive you. Many people, hallelujah. The Bible said that men are deceived because they lack knowledge. Knowledge coming through the world. Without the word, you can't acquire it. That is why the book of Isaiah, God instructed that we should study, study what? The book, the holy book. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell us something. If you enter there with weakness, or you start there listening to me with weakness of mouth, weakness of eyes, weakness of spirit, I deliver it today in Jesus' name. 
Because I tell you, according to the scripture, the word of God said that every other demons and spirits are very easy to defeat. But you see spirit of death. Hallelujah. You see spirit of death. The Bible says it's the last spirit that will be defeated. Why is it the last spirit? Because it's the controller of all. So you have to be, I, I mean, attentive and then you have to be active. Because now these spirits, we need activeness to deal with them. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said that there are two different kinds of deaths. Spiritual death. Spiritual death is a death of the soul under the power of sin. Death of a soul under the power of sin. Romans chapter 8 by 6. Open your Bible. Spiritual death is a death of a soul under the power of sin. In the morning service, we death with pride. We death with the spirit of pride in the morning service. And now we are dealing against the spirit of death. How to defeat them. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Read. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Genesis 2 verse 17. Then John chapter 10 verse 10. Are you there? Read it. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. But to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. <laughs> so it's not enough for you to have life. When you don't have peace. If you have life, you should have peace. When you have life without peace, you don't have life. Hallelujah. There are many people that are alive but no peace. Somebody says spiritual death. Okay, read the next scripture before we go on Ephesians 2 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. But to be spiritual minded is life. To be carnally minded is death. And you had and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 and then John okay. chapter 10 verse 10. Genesis. Genesis. Open it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Open it. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 10. Mm -hmm. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Uh -huh. I have come that they may have life and have it in, in full. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 said, verse 17, he said, every other tree in this garden you are permitted to eat, but this particular one, the day you eat it, you die. So we are talking about spiritual death. I want to touch it a little bit. That is not our main point today, but we have to touch it a little bit. Hallelujah. Because for you to be alive physically, you also have to be alive spiritually. It is God who preserves lives. It is God who protects because he is the creator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we here? If anything happens to your eyes, your spiritual eye automatically affects your physical eye. This eye globe, this one, this one you see is not your main eyes. Your main eyes is inside. And that is why God speaks to you using that one. God uses that one to speak to you when you see things of the spirit. That is the main one God uses. So if anything tampers, if anything happens to that one, this one cannot work. So if a person is spiritually dead, it will affect that person's life. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. When a person is alive, you are alive, you are living, but you don't have work, you don't have money, you are poor. Let me tell you, you are already dead, though, but spiritually. And let me, that is where you see people today, they are committing all kinds of atrocity. Some are drinking a lot of things to die. Some are committing suicide.
suicide because this spirit of death have already gripped them spiritually. Are we here? Nothing happens in the day without being accomplished at night. Before the sun will come out in the day, there was moon at night. And then moon will have to go for the sun to come. Else, the moon will remain. I don't know if we are here. If you are following, you wave your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anything happens to a spiritual life, if anything happens to your spiritual life, you are physically gone somehow. Because it will affect your career, affect your life, affect you. You may not have died anyway, but I tell you, you're already dead. Meet a prophet, a prophet will tell you, meet a pastor, meet one that is a Bible scholar, he will clearly state it to you that if anything happens to your spiritual life, you are dead, you are gone already. Because you'll be walking like a walking corpse. I don't know who God is speaking to today, but I want to charge you up, I want you to know that you have to guide your spiritual life. You have to guide your spiritual life. You have to work on your relationship with God. If anything happens to your spiritual life, it affects you. Now listen to me now. I want to clearly, I want to explain something to you. I hope we are all giving me our ears. Are we here? A native doctor, a witch doctor, herbalists have no right to touch your health. They have no right to touch your blood. They cannot pull even a hair on your head out without killing you spiritually. Are you hearing me? They cannot get you physically like this because you have your hands to war, isn't it? Isn't it? You can fight at least, defend yourself. If, if you don't know what to do, you call the cops for them, like you call police for them. If you don't know what to do, you will get them arrested. But I want you to know that what they always do is to go spiritual because once you are trapped spiritually, you are gone physically. That is why the Bible is truth. That we must be spiritually alert. For to be spiritual minded is life. So when you are spiritually alert, you are alive. Now let me tell us something. It then means that our physical life is kind of Sleep and you can no longer breathe. The blood in your body is 
congealed already. No way, you can't live again. Your life has been terminated by Mr. Death. I want you to know something. Even though we know that death will visit, will visit us one day, but God has his own dates. He has his own number of years that his children must live. That is why you must not joke. That is why you must take today very serious. Come what me, come what me. Despite the attacks, despite the sickness, despite the nightmare, despite the everything, there is this number of years that God has stated that this is the number of years you must spend on earth. And that is how many years? Huh? Jesus. 120. 120 plus 15 on top. Clap it. You will read your Bible. That man, reads, he reads his Bible. Clap your hand for Jesus. So if you die below 120, it's still on family death. Today we see obituary posters and they say 70 years celebration of life. What are they celebrating? It's still, uh, I mean, on family death. If you ask me, it still falls under premature death. If we go by the word of God, Maybe the person at that time, the legs are already weak, the hands are weak, and the person shrinks. The point is that when you know the Lord your God, you keep getting younger every day, three of us. So God has already said it, that a number of our years, as the year moves and we, we are aging, we that knows him will not be aging, but the years will be aging. Clap your hands for Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. 120 years is God's estimated years for mankind. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Then shall the dust return to the earth. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave him. That is the kind of death we are talking about now. When a person's life is terminated, the dust, the body will return to the dust, and then the spirit will return to God. Genesis 6 verse 3. Read it. Then the Lord said, Start a 
afresh again. Uh -huh. Repeat that place again. Uh -huh. Repeat it again. Uh -huh. Now everybody rise up with your Bible. Let's read that place. You see, some people, they don't even open Bible self. It's a problem. Oh. Every miracle you need is based on the word of God. Whatever miracle you desire from God, that the word of God is not a witness to it. It is not from God. Are you there now? Are you there? Psalm 32 verse 7. Are we there? Power. Let's read. Want to go? But first, read that first one. Thou art what first? Repeat it again. Repeat it again. Then go on, read on. Thou shalt preserve me. Take your seat. But first, thou art my hiding place. Somebody say righteousness. Before you can be able to, pre to be preserved by God, or before God will preserve you or can preserve you, he will have to be your hiding place. He will have to be your Lord, your God, your bread, your butter, your morning, your afternoon, your night, your everything. It means you don't take any step without consulting him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say righteousness. It means you have to make God like a cave over you. For God to be a cave protecting, warming you, keeping you. You have to eat with him and drink with him. And you know, you cannot eat and drink with God without running away from his dislikes. Hallelujah. Revelation 1 verse 18. Then Proverbs chapter 10 verse 2. Read it. Are you Revelation now? Read it. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And I have the key of what? Repeat that please. I have the key of what? I want you to hear the key of what? Did you hear that? If you make God your hiding place, if you make him your first, your number one, you see, Jesus said, I am the one that died and now I live. And I have the key of hell and the what? And the death. Can kingdom fight against kingdom? Can you be at peace with God and God will fight you? No way. So, my father, your father, our father, I have the key of life and death. So, why would I live above 120 years? Somebody jump up and say, Jesus, preserve my life. Tell me what we cut your life short. Take your seat. If your father is with the key of death and hell, it that means. You will not even enter hell, self. But there is a guideline, there is a principle that you must hide under his shadow. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2.
Proverbs. Read it. Come close. I shall bless here. Huh? Come, come, come. Read it again. Uh-huh. Thank you. Treasures of wickedness profited nothing, but righteousness keeps one alive. If you want to escape, it does not matter. That death that used to kill everybody like chicken in your family, it can't come near you. It can't come near your dwellings. It cannot even know where you live. It will not even have access to the territory where you reside. Are we here? Are we here? Read that. In fact, you read it from your own Bible. Shout it. Read it again. Proverbs. Read it again. Uh -huh. Treasures of wickedness. Did what? Profited what? Nothing. But what? Oh, righteousness delivered from what? Death. I've been a me right now. Eh? When you make the Lord your hiding place. He is the righteous we are talking about. He delivers you from every arrow of the enemies. He protects you. He gives his angels in charge over you. You know, some of us, we read all these Psalms, we read all these scriptures, we don't understand. They are all for us, but there are guidelines. There are principles. Oftentimes, you read a particular place in the scripture, but you still find out that not that it's not workable. It's workable, but you were not in the right standing when you read it or when you applied it. When you applied that verse. But yet, it's for all and it's workable. Hallelujah. Righteousness delivered from death. And it's true. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, it's true, brother? Righteousness saves he protects. He gives long life. He delivers you from financial debt. Any form of death. Righteousness. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. Righteousness. He's a defender. He's a defender. Yeah, I will defend him. Yeah, I will be with him in trouble. Righteousness. He's a preserver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to escape from this spirit of death that is killing people in your family, killing people everywhere, you must be righteous. Number two, you need a prophet. Say, I need a prophet. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 16. Second Kings chapter 2. There are things that the Lord will never show to you unless you go to his prophet. Prophets, they are God mouthpiece. They receive instructions from God. And through them, we hear what God has for us. That does not mean that God can't speak to you. But I tell you, God speaks more to his prophets. Prophets, they understand God's language even better than you do. When a prophet has a revelation by himself or herself, he can interpret it somehow. But somehow, you may not be able to interpret it. A prophet received divine direction from God. Divine instruction on how you should treat this, that, and this other thing. Can you read the book of 2 Kings? Say, I need a prophet. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 21. Read it. And he went what? Unto the spring of what? The waters. Uh -huh. And he did what? He cast
has the salt in there and said thus said the Lord I have healed these waters my God my God my God my God my God I have healed these water hallelujah if you read from the beginning you will notice it's a story of a particular village a particular city that have everything they need but they have bad water there is money there is everything there is everything they need peace good weather but bad water no bad, no good water. And then the prophet was passing by. They called him and said, Master, please, everything in this city is okay. We like it. But the problem we have is that we don't have good water. And what did the prophet do? The prophet said, get me a cruise. And they brought a cruise and he saw. And he did what? By his prophetic word. He poured the salt in the water. And he pronounced a word. He decreed that from that day, let there not be any bitter water or unclean water. Instantly from that day till today, these people have clean and good water. But all along, the water has been bitter. Not until when the prophet came into the city. Can I pray for somebody? Can I pray for somebody? You will not miss God's direction for your life. Yeah. Every direction you need now to come out of the problem that is before you, receive it. Yeah. Receive that direction now. In the name of Jesus. You need a prophet. Let me tell you, there are problems that will never leave you unless you locate a prophet. Two of us. That's true. You will have to leave your, your, your shell, I mean your home, your water bed, and then search for a prophet. If you don't locate a prophet, let me tell you one thing. Whether it's a true prophet or it's a bad prophet, prophet is a prophet. The Bible is so that we judge not. Hmm, are we here? Are we here? Yes. Are we here? Yes. Are we here? Yes. Hey. Okay. I will educate you small. Clap your hands for Jesus. You know, some people say this prophet is fake, the other one is true, the other one is fake. I want to share little of my experience somewhere, but I will not mention the place. Hallelujah. I remember years back there's a particular church in Lagos here that was everywhere. Raining here, raining there. Rain. I'm not going to mention the church. Because we don't, we don't take God's place to judge. Be sensitive. You must read your scripture so that you don't fall into traps of the enemies. The devil can use anything to accuse you. For those of you that talk anyhow against the prophets of God, even when they are doing wrong, you have no right to accuse them, sir and ma. The only thing you have to do for them, if you feel they are not going your way, you pray and intercede on their behalf. Nobody is above temptation and attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. So, it was raining everywhere. They told, they told, hey. You know me now. Holy Spirit will always tell me something because I don't give them rest at night. Every night is a night with me and them. So I went to bed after one of my midnight prayers. And God opened my eyes and showed me everything about that place. And when I woke up, I called my pastor friend. I said, see, 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 see. She said, the Lord have just shown me. But I tell you, what he showed me, maybe he showed me because I have a higher understanding. Are we here? Are we here? But let me tell you something. 
That does not mean that people are not going there. I mean, that does not mean that people going there are not receiving their miracles. Whatever you call it. However you call it that it's that they are doing there. But the point is that <laughs> they pray in the name of Jesus. And the hearts that you used to attend that to come. It's not the same heart that the other person used to come. You came 